Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Gestational Diabetic. I am your host, Tracy Houston, and I am here to inform you and empower you so that you can be a confident member of your healthcare team. As a quick reminder, none of the information on this podcast can be used to diagnose or treat any medical condition. If you feel as though you are experiencing any problems with your health, please discuss them with your healthcare team. Okay, guys, so today's episode is inspired by the very first review that this podcast got. It was from a husband who listened to the very first episode where I talked about exactly what gestational diabetes is and isn't, and I'll go ahead and read it to you. It says, as a male with a pregnant wife, this helped me understand her her condition tremendously, and he gave the podcast five stars. I think that's awesome. I was so happy to see that a significant other was so interested in what the mom was going through that they decided to research on their own and see how they could be helpful. And I think that's so important for moms to have such a great support system. And so that's what inspired today's podcast episode. We're going to talk to the uh, everyone in our circle, you know, all of our supporting members, whether it be at your workplace, in your home, your close circle of friends, people you associate closely with or frequently with online, whoever that is to you, we are going to address them. So if, if you feel like maybe this is something that they need to hear, please share it, you know, or uh, maybe just list out the things. I'll probably make an infographic that's easily shareable so that you guys can share it and they can uh, they can read that and, you know, just maybe reflect on their actions and see if they can be a little bit better support to you. So with that said, we're just going to go over some really simple do's and don'ts as a supporting member of a gestational diabetic. So first, I believe that the number one absolute must do is understand what gestational diabetes did, what gestational diabetes is. Why? Because when we have an understanding of things, it causes us to be more sympathetic. And in every situation, a little bit of sympathy goes a very long way, right? So I think it's very important to know just what gestational diabetes is, because if you don't, you can say some really ignorant things. And I mean, we've all seen and heard them, right? Even if they weren't said to us, they were said to um, another mom and she posted about it in a Facebook group or something like that, you know? Or maybe we've even been that person to say it ourselves. And then now here we are in this position and we have gestational diabetes and now maybe we're a little bit more knowledgeable. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, so to speak. We're all ignorant to something at some point in life, right? But when we have a loved one going through a certain condition or through a situation, you know, we tend to be more sympathetic. And sympathy combined with education is a beautiful thing, beautiful thing, right? Because hopefully that dictates our, dictates our actions to be a compassionate human being. For all of these supporting members, if you don't know just what gestational diabetes is or how it comes about, Episode one of this podcast is a really quick episode, about six or seven minutes long, and it explains everything about what it is and what it isn't and how it compares to other forms of diabetes or other types of diabetes, I should say. Okay, so talking to all the supporting members out there, the number two thing that you can do as a supporting member of a loved one with gestational diabetes or with any type of diabetes really is just appreciate their effort, appreciate them as a person and the plight that they're going through. I think that Gwen in episode three said it best. Literally no one, no one with any type of diabetes asked to have it. No one, you won't find a single one. So to to be mean or scolding or blaming or anything like that towards the person that's actually going through it, it helps no one, absolutely no one. And in fact, it likely makes the condition worse because stress is a major contributor to diabetes. So, or excuse me, stress is a major contributor to high blood sugar. So what we can do is just really appreciate them and this this condition that they have to go through for this amount of time. You know, it takes 
a lot of change to happen in their lives. They have to prick their fingers multiple times a day. That alone is very mentally taxing. Uh, never mind the emotional component to it. Plus, you're already the person is already pregnant on top of it. You know, so pricking their fingers uh, multiple times a day having to have additional doctor's appointments, which means more stress and more obligations in what is probably an already somewhat hectic and chaotic life. They have to meal plan for themselves. And if the rest of the family isn't eating like they are, then they have to make two separate meal plans. They have to figure out what foods their body tolerates and which foods their body just absolutely will not tolerate or which foods their body will tolerate only in certain portions. Gestational diabetes is really just a period of trial and error, very intense trial and error, might I add, because they are getting data every time that they prick their finger, they're getting data, and that data is telling them if they should or shouldn't make adjustments. And then if it is telling them that they should make adjustments, then they have to figure out what that adjustment needs to be. You know, so it's a very stressful period of time. And the best thing as a supporting member that you can do is to minimize the amount of stress that you contribute. So going back to what I said, it's just appreciate them as a human being and appreciate their effort, especially if you're the significant other. If you don't already know, the mother is building this baby cell for cell, right? And her body is unconsciously doing this and also programming the baby's metabolism and how the body how their body is going to work right and so high blood sugar is what essentially what gestational diabetes is higher blood sugar is directly related to birth defects malformations miscarriages and other problems during pregnancy, labor, and birth. And so it's very important that the mom maintain safe blood sugar levels so that all the chances of these undesirable outcomes can be lessened. And might I add that higher blood sugar is related to all those things, even in pregnancies that are not diagnosed as gestational diabetes meaning that the mom is having a little higher blood sugar than normal, but it's still not at a level high enough to be diagnosed with gestational diabetes. She's still at higher risk for these, these defects, like uh, birth defects and malformations, miscarriages, et cetera. So you being the significant other of the mom, I'm sure if you appreciate their effort from within, you're genuinely and automatically going to do things that showcase that appreciation. And that's just going to help the mom push through this with a much lighter load. Okay, number three, ask how you can help them. Don't ask if they need help because we're kind of almost always programmed to say, no, I don't need anything, I'm okay, blah, blah, blah. No, ask them how you can help because this is going to trigger something. They might think of the smallest task that you can take over that they can delegate. And it would be a huge help if that task was just off of their mind. Or it might be something a little bigger, like maybe going to the grocery store and or cooking, meal, uh, cooking dinner for the whole week or whatever it is. Whatever it is, within your best ability, do what you can. This is going to help de-stress the mom, which directly affects her blood sugar. And again, we want the blood sugars to be in a safe range. We want them to be steady and in a safe range because that type of blood sugar presents the best chances for the best outcomes. All right, number four, exercise with them. Not everyone likes to work out with a partner, but for those who don't really like working out or maybe they need an accountability partner or they need that extra push or maybe they just need some company work out with them because let's be honest most things are easier when you have someone to do it with and again exercise 
directly affects your blood sugar because it pushes, it kind of flushes everything out. Exercise and drinking water, it flushes the sugar out of your blood. It's, it's a very quick way to bring blood sugar levels down. And number five, I say include them in everything that you would normally include them in. Don't exclude them because you think that they won't want to do it because they're pregnant or because they have to do uh, this thing, check their blood sugar or have to get so much sleep or whatever it is. Don't exclude them out of anything, okay? Instead, what would be better is to include them as you normally would and then help them brainstorm how to accommodate their needs in that setting. For example, if there is a party happening at a restaurant and the mom, you think the mom might not want to go because she doesn't know what she can eat at that restaurant. Well, here's a simple fix. You get online and you look at the restaurant's menu and you guys, uh, you go over it to see what's within the carb limits and what, what would be good choices for her. Another example that comes to mind is a mom said that her family always goes on this camping type trip during the holidays and she didn't know how she was going to be able to survive the trip for two or three days because you know she had to have certain snacks and certain meals and they require refrigeration and they, she wouldn't be able to eat like she normally eats and like the family normally eats because they would be out you know in the woods where there wouldn't be close access to a restaurant or a grocery store or anything like that. And so she came into the Facebook group asking for suggestions of how to navigate that. So that's something that if you are inviting this person out, you can help them with, like just ask them. And you know, they won't always have the answers all the time. It might be something they need to think about for a while. And you know what, they might even decline, but that's okay because you still wanna make sure that you're doing your part and still including them. But if they do ask for certain accommodations, if it's within your ability, I say do it. Okay, now we're gonna move over to the don'ts. And the first two don'ts I believe are directly related to the first do, which is to educate yourself on what gestational diabetes is. If you do that, I feel like the first two don'ts will be really easy to avoid. And that is don't blame them for having gestational diabetes and don't scold them for it. Like I said before, nobody asked for this, not a single person. So blaming and scolding is going to do nothing but cause guilt and shame, which the mom probably already went through. Don't add fuel to the fire. Don't reignite the fire. Okay, number two, do not eat her prepared food or snacks. Ah! How many times have you gone to the refrigerator looking for something that you prepared for yourself or maybe you saved from uh, earlier or a restaurant or whatever as leftovers and it was gone? Do you remember how frustrating and upsetting and disappointing it was to see that the food that you wanted was gone. Okay, let me assure you, it is so much worse when you have gestational diabetes. Please, if she has prepared her snacks or anything for her to eat, even if they're even if she didn't prepare it, even if it's just, you know, her protein shakes or her protein bars or whatever it is, don't eat her stuff, guys, because it takes a lot of energy to plan it out and it takes a, a lot of brain power too and it takes a lot of energy to go to the grocery store and shop for herself and then shop for everyone else so please don't eat her snacks because all it's going to do is frustrate her and then in the moment if all of her snacks are gone in the moment she still has to eat with gestational diabetes you have to eat at certain time intervals. So if all of her snacks are gone, she's either going to forego eating it for, at that time, which could be uh, bad for her blood sugar, or she's going to eat whatever's available, which let's face it, most of our prepared foods in today's world are very high carb. So that's also going to be bad for her blood sugar. So please stay away from everything that is claimed as hers during this period. Okay, number four is 
don't tease or tempt her with food that you know she can't have. I mean, if she wasn't pregnant and if this wasn't literally a life-threatening situation, sure, it could be funny. In any other circumstance, sure, why not? But this is a very serious situation and the baby's life is at risk. And so teasing or tempting with, you know, a cupcake or whatever, have you like that? I mean, it's just, it's really rude. And that's putting it nicely. You know, don't be a jerk. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Don't be a jerk. And um, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't have certain foods around them or whatever like that. You know, if, if, it, if it's your, if you eat cupcakes after every meal, you know, I'm sure they're used to that by now or whatever, but to purposely intently eat something in front of someone that you know that they're, um, that they would probably want any other time, but they can't have right now because they're trying to be disciplined, just help her out, okay? That's all I'm asking, just help her out. And then number five, I would say don't monitor them so closely. And what I mean by that is, you know, you don't have to ask her, is, is that on your plate within carb limits? Or, you know, did you check your blood sugar or something like that? It, that's not necessary and it's a bit overkill and it would add extra stress to her, which again, like I said, we know that, ex or that it, um, more stress directly correlates to higher blood sugars. So, you know, just don't monitor them too closely. Don't make them feel bad about, you know, eating out or not wanting to eat out or having a cheat meal or not having a cheat meal. You know, I mean, this stuff can go both ways in any situation. Don't, don't make them feel bad about not eating enough or eating too much or um, eating a potato or not eating a potato. You know, it's just, it's too much guys. So just don't monitor them too closely, you know, and, and trust that they are doing what they feel like is right for their body. And that not only that, but they're, they're using the blood sugar readings as data to make the best decisions for themselves and for baby. Guys, that's all I have for this one. I hope it was helpful. I will definitely make that infographic so that you guys can share it. Just kind of, you know, ease that on in there to your Facebook feed or whatever so that uh, your loved ones can <clears throat> catch the hint. And if you guys feel like I missed any, then shoot me a note somewhere and let me know so that maybe I could perhaps do it, uh, part two of this. Oh, and with that said, you know, a couple of significant others have adopted the diet while the mom was on it, which I think is just absolutely amazing. Talk about selfless. So that's also another option. Let me just throw that in there. Now, before I let you go, I want to let you know about Full Circle Prenatal. It is the best prenatal vitamin on the market, in my opinion, and I absolutely love the owner of it and her story and her passion for women's health and bringing something of great quality to the market, to the prenatal market. And so I'm mentioning her, I'm mentioning the vitamin because right now for probably the next two weeks until November 1st is when it's expected to return, you can catch it at a discount of 20% off. And the reason being is that COVID kind of affected their manufacturing process. And so right now they're, they're on back order. There's, there's nothing being made right now. So until they can start manufacturing and shipping again, the owner has put the vitamin as, or everything on the site is 20% off. So I will link that also in the blog post, as well as this week's featured recipe, which is the breakfast burrito casserole. It's another way to get in eggs, but it's a pre-make breakfast and it could freeze really easily. It does have one potato in it, but that's for like what, I think six or, it's either six or eight servings. So, you know, you won't get a lot of potato in it. And, but if you can't tolerate potato at all, just leave the potato out and use the rest of the ingredients. It's, st it's still really delicious. So I will link to all of that in the notes, guys. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.